All right. Yay. Hey, Hello. guys. Welcome um, to confirmation class, class tonight. Can everybody say hi? Hi. All right. All right. So we've got Emma, Molly, Maya, Caleb, and Noah all here, and you guys here, and um, Paul's going to watch the, the rerun. Is, is that what the, the recording? The recording. Yes. Um, you can always watch the rerun, right? Because oh. if you don't get enough here, you can always watch it again. No. Right? Right? No. No. All right. Well, let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, uh, we thank and praise you for all the gifts that you give us. Uh, help us to be content with who we are and what we have and to, to know that, that you give us everything that we need to support this body and life. Um, so as we talk about the ninth and 10th commandments, help us um, to be content and to trust you um, to provide for us. We pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share the worksheet and we'll do this together. All right, so I want to be able to edit this. No, I don't want to do that. I want to. No, oh, stop. Stop. I want to do more of the PDF or whatever it is. What's that? So if you go up in that where you can see everybody. Yeah. That very slim. Over, over that one. Then it'll yeah. say who is talking, and then you have this more. Is Thank you, Caleb. All right. So we're going to look at our, our first passage for tonight is from Philippians 4, 11 to 13. So let's open up our Bibles to this passage. Philippians chapter 4 is one of um, Paul's epistles. It's a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus. And so Ephesians. Is going to be on page 1571. Which verse are we have to look? Verses 11 to 13. But you said it wasn't Ephesians, then it says it's in Philippians. Whoa, I'm sorry. Philippians. I, I, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> it's not my day. All right. Philippians, page 1584. Is that better, Maya? Yeah, Philippians, Philippians chapter four, right, Noah? I don't think I have this all together. Fudge. Fudge brownies. That's what we have today. Fudge brownies. All right, would someone read for me? Philippians four, verse 11 to 13. Someone who didn't just take a bite. So <laughs> <laughs> Emma, can you read, please? 11 to 13. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to be abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. All right. So what if you just kind of remember, what, what do we put in these blanks? Um, I have learned in whatever situation I am to be. Do you get that word? What is it? Content. content. All right. To be content. Um, and so that we're going to be talking about that word a lot. And then, you know, in any circumstance, whether I have a lot or I'm hungry, if I have an abundance or if I'm in need, Part of the reason of, of being content, the secret of being content, is knowing this, that I can do all things through him who strengthens, strengthens me. All right. And him is, is God. So I can do all things through God who strengthens me. And so that this contentment comes from knowing that God is with me, that God has a plan for me, that God will strengthen me for whatever situation I am in. And um, so I think this is really important. In following Jesus, does God guarantee you that you will not have trouble in your life? No, actually, Jesus says, in this world, you will have troubles, troubles all right? Um, 
And, and so sometimes the circumstances of our lives, it can be really kind of dire. It can be really in, in a time where we can, we might wonder where our next meal is coming from. Does that mean that God has abandoned us? No. Or is he saying, trust me, I've got you. Trust. Yeah. And so trust. even, even when, when things go poorly, we can trust God um, that, that he will see us through whatever we go through. So at the heart of the, the ninth and 10th commandments, we're going to kind of smush them together. Um, it's this, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. That's right. So you shall not, his, his house is kind of that, that first part. And then you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything. anything. Good, Emma. Anything that is your neighbor's. And so if you kind of look at it, the, the ninth commandment has to do with your neighbor's house, all of his non-living possessions. The tenth commandment is to deal with his, his wife, his servants. Um, in, in any of his living animals. And so the ninth and 10th commandments kind of put together coveting non-living things and, and living things. All right, so this is in, in part of what, what God told the Israelites in this land you're going to is flowing with milk and honey. You'll have everything that you need. Don't, don't desire what isn't yours. Okay, Get, be content with what you have. And so to covet, all right, it put down here to covet, C-O-V-E-T, all right, is to yearn, desire, or to crave something or someone um, in an unhealthy way. All right, while disregarding what you already have. And so is, is it okay to say, I really want to be a brain surgeon? Is that, a, can that be a good desire and drive you to accomplish great things? Or, or I really desire to get an A on that test, okay? What, what's an unhealthy way of getting an A, Maya? Cheating. Cheating, all right. So you're gonna do whatever you, you want to to try to get that A. So that's an unhealthy way. Um, or, or an athlete, you wanna get really big muscles. And- or you want to win the race and you're in second place and you want to get in the first place and you spike the you 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 hurt that person in front of you okay or you take steroids all right um drugs that help you get stronger faster bigger okay is that cheating yeah all right does that actually hurt yourself that's actually illegal in cross country is that, exactly and so um so instead of being content with what you have and who you are um this commandment especially warns us when we desire what we don't have in an unhealthy way. Um, and this isn't like going to the grocery store and say, ooh, I really want that Reese's peanut butter cup, okay? Um, but if it's to the point where you don't have money and what might you do to get that Reese's peanut yeah. butter cup, you might just slip into your pocket. Just like you did it when you slipped a bunch of candy in your hat. Underneath my stocking cap, all right? That was an unhealthy way of getting something. And so in some regards, the, the ninth and 10th commandments are a bridge commandment. It leads you often into more serious commandments, all right, to break other commandments, to, to steal. Um, when you commit adultery, you, you're desiring somebody else's spouse, all right? Um, when you, you murder, you know, maybe you're, you're angry or you feel hurt, and so you do that. Um, you kill someone. Um, and so in an unhealthy way, you, you desire and try to get something. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So, so really it's this unhealthy desire that, that, that coveting is a part of. Okay. So two things, coveting really stems from a lack of faith. Okay. It's, it's it, at the heart of, um, coveting it's it's you you don't believe that god is going to provide you what you really need okay god you aren't going to supply me with my food so i'm going to take matters into my own hands and steal and and steal or 
Plunder. Another sin, all right? <laughs> Rob, plunder, kill, pillage, all right? And so there's also a second component of this that you have this false belief that if you have this one thing or this one person, that one more thing will make you happy, happy right? Just like the saying, money can't buy happiness. Right, but, but you think, all right, if I just have a little bit more, all right. If I can run just a little bit faster, but but the truth is, often if we if we aren't happy with what what little we have, will a little bit more make us happier? It'll always be. There'll always be another another thing to strive for, another thing to to want, and so so this this coveting stems from a lack of faith. You don't trust that God really knows what you need, but also. This whole idea that, you know, Emma thinks, well, if I just grow five more inches, all right, then I'll be happy. <laughs> but you're just perfect the way you are. You're not, you're all right. perfect. So, you're better and, and than he, tall as five foot. So you, do you trust, yeah. Emma, that God will get you to the height that he wants you to be at? Yeah, all right. So we, we don't have to stretch you from that rack when we go home tonight. Wait, what? <laughs> um, Eli's know. like, what? I don't I know about I, this. I think that's illegal. Yeah. That's illegal. Okay. Yes. I just go grab your arms and I'll grab your feet and we'll just stretch you out. That's illegal. <laughs> that's not very funny. Should I just stop picking on you? You can actually all right. Talk okay. Multiple so, songs, but does not, all right. Not I love you, Emma. All right. So, coveting can be centered around anything. Centered. Um, and so, so coveting is when your life revolves around this one thing, where you you want this more than anything. Um, and so your, 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 your life centers around this. It can be people, it can be possessions, it can be accomplishments, I, you know, it could be feelings, it could be abilities, status. And, and so ultimately, we must discover the, the deeper you know, need or the deeper um, desire, well, that's right, the need, all right, that is driving our desires. Why do we think that, that if we have this, then we'll be happy, all right? And so, so trying to figure out what, what are the issues behind our coveting? Um, what's another word when you center your life around something, all right? Whether it's living or whether it's dead, whether it's a possession, and it's almost like you're worshiping it. What do we call that when we worship something other than God? Maya? Idolatry. Idolatry. And so, so a lot of times coveting, um, maybe next to that, write down the word idolatry. Or after, after this, all right, I'll, oh, I'll just kind of put this right here in this box. All right, idolatry. Okay, that, that there can be um, a, a desire that's bigger than God, all right? So we want it more than we want God. Uh, I can okay, there's, your sister will help you out. She's the best. Okay. All right, and so one of the first examples of coveting happened before there was even sin. What? There's if you if you go go back to Genesis chapter three, the very first temptation had to do with coveting. Okay, that when the Genesis three verse six. Okay, this is a no sin, no death. The garden is perfect. Adam and Eve were perfect. It was wonderful. But God told Adam and Eve, "Don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil." Okay, because if you eat of it, you know, you will die. And um, Eve saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food. It looked good to the eye. It was also desirable for gaining wisdom, knowledge. all right, wisdom, knowledge. 
I think both are good. We'll do wisdom and knowledge. All right. She took some of it and ate it. Even though God said, don't do it. Satan tempted her to say, God's holding out on you. All right. If you eat this, you will be like God, able to know what is right and wrong. And so really, in a lot of ways, coveting is, is us choosing, I know what's best for me. Um, and, and so, so the very first sin, the very first disobedience of God started with coveting. She desired knowledge. She desired wisdom. Okay. And not only that, who was right there with her? Adam. What did Adam do? Did she say, oh, well, Eve, no, we don't need that. We've got God. We don't need to eat that fruit. God told us not to. Yeah, he, ate he ate it too. All right. So maybe he didn't want to make Eve upset. All right. Or all right, let's 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 do this together. Or I, I'm I'm gonna miss out if I don't try it. And so um, Adam tried it as well. And that brought in, then God was walking. And do you remember what Adam and Eve did when they heard God in the garden? They hid. They were afraid of God. Yeah, Maya. Was it like possible to get angry at things before there was sin? Yes. So what would there to be to get angry about? Um, but like you said that like Adam might not have wanted to upset Eve about doing it. Well, why would she be mad at me? If she did something wrong and Adam didn't. That 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 would be the only thing. Or if Adam said, You sinful woman, all right, God told us not to. Um, and that would cause some tension in their relationship. So basically, it all stemmed against the disobedience. Okay. All right. And so um, coveting, it, it was the first sin in the Bible. And it's, it's been present throughout the Bible. Um, most of the sins, a lot of sins start with desiring something that God says, that's not for you. And so the next little blocks there is sometimes we think that if we have this thing, it will give us an identity. It makes us who we are. Instead of, of having this identity, we should be content. All right. Content. That, that's kind of the, the theme word of, for today. Content with what we have and realize we are... Um, we are actually, I'm going to use a different word here. We are stewards of what God has entrusted to us. Or maybe caretakers, is that a better word? Steward? Steward means God gives it to you to, to use it and, and um, take, to, to manage it. All right. We are a manager of what God has entrusted to us. What word were you saying, Caleb? I know I'm watching a lot of pirates in the game. So, Arr, I'm a pirate. Pirate. so um so a steward is somebody who takes care of care of their master's stuff. Okay. So God has given us stuff, God has given us abilities, God has given us an, uh, lots of things for us to, to enjoy in our life. And so um, we should take what we have. One of the best examples of this is um, God gave one person five talents. God gave another person three talents. And God, well, the parable, a master gave one servant um, one, one talent. And so remember what they did. The one with five talents went out, did business, and doubled it. So then the master came back, here's 10. And I doubled what you had given me the one that had three. So I'm going to take what you've given me and I'm going to use it and, and double that. And so he wound up with six. And then one, the one with just one says, well, I'm kind of afraid to use what, what I have. So I'm just going to bury it in the ground and do nothing with it. 
Okay. Don't bury it in the ground. Just sit there and forget where you buried it. So the, the master, when he came back and said, why did you bury it? At least you could have put it in the bank where it could have gotten interest. And so the master said, take the one from the, the, the person who had one and give it to the one who had 10 and kick the one who wasted what he had out of my He my didn't kingdom. waste it. He saved so, it. But he did it. He, waste, he wasted the opportunity and the time to make use of it. Okay. okay. So to, to use what we have that God has entrusted the, to us. So I want to read a story of, of idolatry and how it can have awful consequences. Let's turn in our Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 21. 1 Kings is in the book of history. Um, this starts on page 476 in your Bible. Um, page number 476. 476. First Kings chapter 21, and we're going to read the first 16 verses. Maya? Yes. Can you read verses one through four? Get us started here. So everybody on page 476? You all with me? All right. This is Naboth's vineyard. Go ahead, Maya. Now Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard in Jezreel beside the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And after this, Ahab said to Naboth, give me more vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden because it is near my house and I will give you a better vineyard for it. Or if it seems good to you, I will give you a garden in my All right, stop it right there, okay? Land was very important. Land was passed down from one generation to the next. And so this is, this is land that was in Naboth's um, name and part of his family. Um, and what, is, what does um, Ahab, Ahab was the king. What does King Ahab want to do? What does he want? Maya? Yeah, he wants. Um, yes, he wants to take his, um, you know, I, I want this land. I want this vineyard. And I just, I want this more than I want anything. Sell it to me. All right, keep on going. What happens next? Verse three. But Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my father. All right, so I, sh I shouldn't do this. This is wrong. Um, this is something that my fathers have given to me and I will give to my kids. All right, how does Ahab respond, Maya? And Ahab went into his house, sex and so on, because of what Naboth the Jezreelite had said to him. For he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down on his bed and turned away his face and would not eat no food. All right. So what is King Ahab doing? Not eating. Yes, he is, <laughs> he is pouting. All yeah. right. He's he's throwing a temper uh, the temper yeah. tantrum. Temper tantrum. Yes, he's a fit. He's just I want this man. He won't give it to me. All right. So um he Perfect. You can just imagine a king doing that. Yes. All right. He's laying in his bed, face down, not going to talk to anybody, not eating because he is just so upset. Okay. To that, that he wants something and he thinks if I get this, then I will be happy. All right. Now, if he, if he's a king, does, does he have a lot of other property? Yeah. Does he have a lot of other stuff? Yeah. Do you think Nahab has any other property? No. Yeah. This is all that he has. Everything that he has. And so King I mean, Ahab says, I want that property. If all right. I were to, if I were to buy that, if I was a king, I would say, I will buy the vineyard and you can keep your land and your entire vineyard and I will, and it's free for you. You can have your entire vineyard. You can run it for me. Yeah. So, you so, can run everything. But, the, but he wants to buy it. it. He wants it to be his. All right. Who wants to read about Jezebel? One of those women who basically is evil. If, there, if there's one person in the Bible, they yeah. can say, well, you don't want to name your daughter. All right. You don't want to name your daughter Jezebel. And also, she's like, like the mother. Like, oh, can you Yes. Yeah, so, Emma, Rita, tell us about Jezebel. Read verses five to seven. 
But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said to him, Why is your spirit so vexed that you eat no food? And he said to her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite, and said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else, if it pleases you, I will give you another vineyard for it. For it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. And Jezebel, his wife, said to him, Do you now govern Israel? Arise me, Fred, and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of David the Jezreel. All right. And so the queen says, Don't worry, my dear husband. I, I will make I will make this all work out. So I can just imagine you being the king. <laughs> well, I hopefully I don't desire or covet anything quite like this. It's just like the mother who's like, oh, you're yes. doing a tantrum. Just let me get you whatever all right. you want. So let's see how Jezebel gets the land for her dear husband. Anybody else want to keep reading? All right, let's go back to Maya and then we'll go back to Emma. Verse eight. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal. And she sent the letters to the elders and the leaders who lived with Naboth in his suit. Keep going, read, read through. Um, 12. Read through 14. And she wrote in the letters, proclaim a fast and set Naboth at the head of this of the people and said two worthless men opposite <laughs> him and let them be, bring a charge against him saying you have cursed god and the king and then take him outside and stone him to death oh so what's her plan stone kill him. him kill him in a fair way or not a nice not fair, a fair way. way all right by what commandment all. are they breaking if Literally, they're two people who are lying which on, commandment did we study do not murder well do not murder and do you not bear false witness, right? Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, Maya, keep reading 11. And the men of the city, the elders and the leaders who lived in the city, did as Jezebel had sent word. As it was written in the letters that she sent to them, they proclaimed a fast and set Naboth at the head of the people. And the two worthless men came in and sat opposite him. And the worthless men brought charges against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth has first God in the king. So they took him outside. The city and stoned him to death with stones. Then they sent sent to Jezebel saying, Naboth has been stoned, he is dead. Oh, all right. So so Jezebel, not not a princess, right? <laughs> she's she's kind of kind of kind of very bad. All right, do you have a question? Well, um, in some of the Bible translations, there's something that I heard was that like the people who received the letter saw it and it said it was signed to Ahab, but they recognized like Jezebel's handwriting. You know, like, yeah. Oh, her action. So, maybe. All right. I don't know. Emma, can, like the main Emma can you read verses 15 to 16? As soon as Jezebel heard that David had been stoned and was dead, Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money, for Naboth is not alive, but dead. And as soon as Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, was dead Ahab arose to go down to the vineyard of Naboth. Nay, neighbor, the Jezreelite to take possession of it. All right. Did King Ahab take possession of that vineyard in a God pleasing way? No. 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 Okay. He coveted and he got it in a unhealthy way. Okay. Have, having that vineyard was more important than doing what was right. Okay. So, so, three yeah. And so, um, so. You know, so this is coveting will often lead us into to other commandments. Can you think of another King David? What did he covet or who did he covet? Yes, Emma? Bathsheba. Bathsheba, all right, who was Uriah's wife, all right. And David lusted after her, he desired her, he had adultery with her, he then murdered um, her husband. And um, took possession of, of his wife. All right. Um, so even King, you know, King David had had a heart after the old Lord's heart. Um, but even King David struggled with this commandment. Okay. So this is a really tough one because our whole United States um, and advertising 
and uh, marketing tries to convince you that that you will only be happy if you have Everything. more stuff right if you drive the right car if you wear the right clothes if you have the right hair um the, the newest smartphone all right that <laughs> a lot of a lot of um our, our status comes from what we have right and and so but when god looks at us what does god look at us to see and, and judge who we are i'll take my cracked glass back i fully he looks at our heart okay he looks at what's inside of us and, and that's what's most important any other questions or thoughts on a, on a couple of those stories All right, let's keep going. Uh, we, we already looked at Philippians 4, 11 to 13. For I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. content. All right. Um, in, in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens, strengthens strength. <laughs> right strengthens yep. me okay um and so just so what you yeah caleb um this is reminding me but i don't know where i got this from but in social studies in my at during class we were writing about um the rise of christianity and the spread of christianity okay so i don't know where i got that from it's just it, i remember it. just a connection some history all right so so the next thought with what you desire most okay will guide your heart in this world or your way i think both are good your heart in this world um jesus says seek you know whatever your heart wherever your your treasure is there your heart is as well um Jesus also talks about um, seek first. What should we seek first? God's kingdom and all these things will be given to you. And so God says he wants to be first in our life. Love him with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind. Love him. Be content in who we are in Christ. And when we're able to do that, we'll, we'll be content with who we are and everything that we have. All right. And so um, we will either view God and his people as valuable in and of themselves or as a, just say, a means to get what we want, all right? That we, instead of loving people, we will say, I just want you so I can be cool too. Or I, if I hang around you, um, then, you know, you can spend some money on me or just, so we use people instead of loving people. And so what we want to do is we want to live for eternity and strive for heavenly virtues, not earthly virtues. Okay, so, so turn with me Back to Philippians 4. I know we were just there. We're, we're, we're practicing getting to Philippians. And this time, let's go to Philippians, not Ephesians, right? <laughs> um, Philippians 4, verse 8. Um, page 1584 again. Excuse me. Could someone read for me Philippians 4, verse 8? Noah, can you read? Thank you. Go ahead. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. All right. And so instead of thinking about what we want or desire, what should we spend our time thinking about? 
on what God wants, all right, and what God says is good um, to on His Word, on His law, on on heavenly virtues. All right. Any questions about coveting? Pretty straightforward, but but it. it this is the, this is one of the hardest commandments that you're gonna you're gonna struggle with. Sometimes you might say, "I I wish I wasn't me. I would wish I was more like somebody else." Is that coveting? I wish I didn't have a broken tooth. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I wish I wasn't clumsy and broke broke a I pinky. Can't, I'm not clumsy. <laughs> my dad threw a football behind me and I slipped and my and I jammed it. That's your dad's fault. Yes. <laughs> And that's that's the whole entree. I and I, I'm giving you you know I'm giving you a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um so just to make sure that that to, to be content. All right. So to try to wrap up all the commandments, well, we're going to wrap up the commandments here. Um, we're probably going to get done a little bit early tonight. I know you guys will be really sad. Um, yeah, but we're sad. we're gonna we're gonna get this done um in the next ten minutes, and then we'll do a little break. And then we'll come back for the wrap up, and I think we'll be done about seven forty-five. Okay. Are we taking a break now? No. Why not? We're gonna do a wrap up. All right. Okay. So our obedience to the commands um, results from or be from our relationship with God, and not for our relationship with God. So, so when we when we obey God. We're not doing it because we have to, but we're doing it out of our relationship with God. It's a response to God. So can we earn God's mercy by what we do? No. 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 We, we can't earn. He loves us so much that he sent Jesus to die for us on the cross. Can, can God love us anymore? No. And, and so when we say, I want to, to do what you want me to do, God, we do it because or from um, God's love for us. And so at the heart of all the commandments is this four-letter word that starts with the letter L. Love, love is the basis of the oh, commandments, Marshall. all right? And, and so um, we want to love, love God and loving others, all right? So which, which neighbors does work, but others, okay? All right. And so, um, so commandments, okay, one, two, three, all right, talk about loving who? Have no other gods, you don't misuse God's name, honor the Sabbath, God. All right. So love, love God. Okay. Um, Commandments, the rest of the commandments, right? Honor your parents, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie, don't covet. All right, so four through 10, ah, four through 10 is love others. So when you think about the, the first three commandments, is that a vertical relationship with God or a horizontal relationship? What do you think, Caleb? Vertical. Vertical. All right. And when we say love others, is that our others on our own horizontal plane? All right. So, so we think about loving God, our vertical relationship, love each other is our horizontal relationship. And then the three uses, the three functions of God's law, maybe you've heard this before, are as a, a curb, a mirror, and as a guide a guide or ruler okay and so which one of those do you think reflects who we truly are and shows our need of a savior a mirror okay so when we look in the mirror <laughs> and we say mirror mirror on the wall who's the fairest of them all all right does it say emma no okay it actually looking at the mirror of god law says you are a sinner you are a failure you mess up you deserve nothing but god's punishment you're right i am a screw up all right so so it reminds us we need a savior 
we can't save ourselves, all right? What, how does the law act as, what does the law act like to prevent us from doing bad things and to keep order in the world? A curb. a curb, all right? So if you're driving in a car and you hit the curb, that tells me about here, right? Yeah, you're 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 gonna be hitting dangerous things. There might be a tree, a fire hydrant, people. All right. Um. So the curb sets boundaries. All right. The, and then the last one, uh, what leads us into God's way and the path towards life? The God God's law serves as a guide. All right. How does God want us to live that that pleases Him? And so God's commandments show us as as a guide. Um, we follow God from that. All right, just a couple other passages. Ecclesiastes 7.20 says, surely there is not a righteous, righteous dude, all right? There's not a righteous man on earth. There's no one who is right, all right? Uh, there is no one who always does good and never sins, okay? Um, no one is holy. We all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. And, and the, the Romans 6.10 says that, that for the death he died to sin, all right, once for all. That's We're going to put once for all in this blank. Once for all. Okay. So when Jesus died on the cross, what sins did he pay for? All. All of them. Okay. Jesus doesn't need to be re-sacrificed. In the Old Testament, how often did the, the Hebrews have to offer sacrifices to God? Once a year? Well, every day, right? And But, but specifically, once a year, there was a day of atonement there where they would sacrifice the lamb um, for, for the people. And so God, he, he was sacrificed once for all. And so the light, he died, he rose again. And so now he lives to God. And so mainly... Our identity, who we are, rests in the reality that we are children of God. We are adopted into God's family. Therefore, we can be content, content as children of God. We have everything we need as a child of God. Okay? Five minutes? Yeah. All right. Go. Vamanos. Five minute break and then we'll come back for reflection time. What time is my mind today? I spelled righteous. Caleb did not be more sure as well. What time I do that? Um, <laughs> all right, so we just took a little bit of time to, to, to look at the reflection questions, to consider um, coveting in our own life, in our own situation. Um, so if, even if you haven't written them down, maybe we can just kind of discuss some of these together. So Number one, what did you guys put down? What is something that you find yourself coveting the most? Anybody want to share? Caleb? Something I'm missing that are custom. Shoes? Mm -hmm. All right. Custom we're... pair of Nike Air Force One Lows. All right. So having some really cool shoes. Okay. They're really, really nice shoes. Fun. All right. What, what do you say, Maya? iPhones. I don't have any phone. Okay. So to have, have some type of a smartphone. Okay, because everybody else has one, right? That's what you need in life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can this, you, this age, you need a phone. Can you live you without a phone? Mm -hmm. That also helps because then you don't have social media in your face. Yep. Yes. Emma, what do you put down for that? What, what's something that you covet? <laughs> okay, so a, a, a friendship. That is is going to maybe be going to a new school. That that would be a disruption. Okay. Noah, did you think of something? What 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 would you covet the most? Soccer. Soccer. All right. Just uh, you know, would your greatest desire to be play on the nat men's national team? Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but you're on that you're on that path, right? You're on the on the under twelve and under. National or yeah, youth development. Cool. Um, Eli, what about you? Is there something that you would say you covet more than anything else? Be better at school. To be better at school. Okay. Be a better piano player. 
No. <laughs> All right, Laurel, I have a or tee -hee. What, How about you? What any, what do you desire most? I don't know. <laughs> Think of something. Probably a higher roof space. My bedroom's bigger than this. <laughs> like your room. Your ceiling. My room's bigger than this. <laughs> She's very comfortable. All right. <laughs> What are some reasons that you think that 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 you covet or desire something maybe that you don't have or you're uncertain about the future? Well, I already said mine. Yeah. Because they're a really really nice pair of shoes. Okay. So that so so what is so so they're they're a nice pair of shoes. What does that mean to you? Because they're a really nice pair of shoes, and that's the number one shoe to have right now. All right. So if you wear those shoes, your status in the eyes of others goes up. Yeah, because I'm very looked down on because of what I wear. Because like this, they really hate it. All right. They really hate it. But yeah. So so it's just by having something cool, all right. Um it it Besides, it's your level. really cool. Okay, good. Any anybody else? Why do you think you want a deeper reason why you want that? Maya? I just don't have one at all. Like some people, like they want like the newest model. Yeah. It's like mine is made more simple. I want a phone, any kind of phone. Right. <laughs> like mine. So. <laughs> like you give me your. How about you, Eli? What would you yeah, say? No. Why you want to be better in school? Because I don't want to have to worry about homework as much. All right. So if you're just maybe a little bit smarter, you would get things done a little bit faster and not have to do as much homework. Maybe. All right. I remember when I was about your age, in my mind, the coolest thing to have was a jean jacket. That's right, a jean jacket. And I thought that if only if I had a jean jacket, then everybody would say, you are, you're the most amazing person ever. And so I remember one Christmas, I got a jean jacket. And I wore that jean jacket. And then I realized when I looked around, that that phase had passed and I was the only one wearing a jean jacket. And so instead of being cool, people just kind of shook their head and said, that's, that's just Andy. Like last season? Well, like like two years ago season. And the phases just changed, so you yeah. just wait it out. And eventually something that you are might become popular. Yeah. And, and just be you. What do you like to wear? What, what do you feel comfortable in? Um, a lot of what, especially in middle school, Sometimes you live because you're afraid of what other people would say, um, because you're not sure of who you are. And, and, and part of, of having that foundation in Christ is to say, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, okay? You are who God made you to be. You are different in a wonderful way. You have specific gifts and abilities that that no one else has, and, and God, is, God has a plan for you. Okay. Um, can you think of something in, in your life that you really wanted something, then you got it, and you were kind of disappointed by how it turned out or, or what, what you had? Yeah, Eli. <laughs> um, I was at summer camp this summer, and I got a knife. Yay, but then it turned out to be uh, dangerous, like where you held it, it could hurt you. So you were excited to get it, but then once you actually had it, it wasn't quite what you thought it would be. It was a danger hazard. It was a, it was a danger hazard. Yeah. All knives are dangerous. Well, it's maybe closing it, or it just, it was especially, Eli could have lost a finger. Let's just say that. No? <laughs> all right. I've given myself a deep cut, but not lost a finger. Okay, all right, a deep cut. All right. Any, anybody else? So, Maya, if you got a phone, would your life change dramatically? Uh, not really. Okay, but you just you want a phone just 
because you can say you have a phone and be like everybody else. Well, and also if you want to like keep in touch with people that that because changing different schools, I don't get to talk to those people anymore. Since I work yeah. on my phone, I could have still like and also like most people don't like to have conversations over school email very yeah. much. So so just build a FaceTime or you know chat with people that you don't get to see anymore. Good. Yeah, I know <laughs> a couple of Christmases ago, I was so excited. I was gonna get a, a bigger TV, a 55 inch TV, whoa. And when I got here, it was cracked and broken. And it was like, I was so sad because I was, it was, it didn't work. And it's just like, uh, I waited for this and then it, it got delivered and it was broken. It was just a fiasco then returning it. That, that you know, eventually it got made right but it was just disappointed because I was looking forward to so much, so much. And it's just like, all right, it's one other thing. So yeah, Eli, you had your hand raised. I, I was wondering if you got a refund. I, uh, yeah, I eventually I got a, a new TV that worked. So yes, very excited. All right, so question number four, I think this is a really important one. How does the fact, the reality that Jesus died on the cross and he rose from the dead help us be content? Uh, Maya and then Eli. So, like, he was very content on earth because, like, he didn't put, like, desire in front of him dying for us. Like, yeah. he probably didn't really want to very much. I mean, like, nobody wants to, like, die. It's like, he did it anyways, and he didn't let anything go in front of it. He, he lived for God's kingdom, all right, and, and he rose from the dead. What would you say, Eli? I'd say that we can never be the best because Jesus died for all of humanity, so just got to be content with yourself. Yeah, be, be content with who, who you are, who God made you to be, okay? Now, think about Jesus. Did Jesus have a house? No. Did he have a place to lay his head? I mean, people, you know, you didn't have any of the places owned. Did he have a wife? No, he didn't. All right. Um, did he have the, the latest iPhone? No. No. Did he have the best sneaker sandals? Probably not. Okay. Sandals, right? And then so, but, he, but Jesus. Okay. Um, <laughs> they didn't have sneakers back then. Um, designer sandals. You know. <laughs> So Jesus, what, what did he live for? Jesus said that man does not live on bread alone, but what does man live on? Every word, every word that comes from God. And so Jesus says, I'm not living for, for me or for man or this world, but I'm living for God. And so Jesus, he, he was very content with who he was and the life that he had and I, I i just imagine jesus he was just he was he laughed he had lots of joy because uh he knew who he was and he was content um with that and i think the more we 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 know who we are um in christ we can be more content all right so what is one thing you can do to be more content eli what is what do you think to look to God for guidance. All right, ask God for guidance. If, all right, if you're feeling maybe you, you need something, um, bring it to God in prayer. One of the best ways to be content is to be grateful. All right, if you haven't written anything down for number five, say, write down, give thanks. All right, if to, to count your blessings, all right. Noah, did you write that down? Did you write that down under number five? Caleb, put away your phone. Thank you. Under number five, you okay? Yeah, I'm done. Write down, be, be thankful, be grateful. All right. Um, that if you, you know, say thank you, God, for, for my lack of height. Thank you, God, for um, my, my, 
the ability to make people laugh. Thank you, God, that I have running water and a bed to sleep in. Thank you, God, that um, I have people that love me. Thank you, God, for a gift that I get to share as a pastor. Thank you, God, for, and as you start thinking of all the ways that God has blessed you, you know what that makes you feel? It makes you feel, I got things pretty good, and it helps you be content. And so one of the best steps that you can take to become more content, count your blessings um, every day and be thankful. All right? All right. Any questions, thoughts on being content or the commandments? No. All right. Um, any prayer requests as we wrap up tonight? All right. Yeah. So, so Andy Wall, we've been praying for him for a while, and Andy, he was in church this Sunday. So we're just so so thankful for that. All right. Anything else? Chloe. Madison. What? Madison. Madison. Okay. Anything specific? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just thankfulness. That is um, Dan and Ashley Frost Knight's adopted girl, oh. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Elizabeth, there's another Madison. I don't know. Okay. All right, let's pray. Lord God, gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for these students. Thank you for the gifts that you give us. Um, help us to be thankful and content with all that we have and all that we are. Um, Lord, I, I thank you for the healing that you've given to Andy Wall, um, for the, the victory you've given him thus far over COVID. Now restore his body and, and give him strength for living. We also thank you for a little baby Madison that you have given to Dan and Ashley Foss Knight um, to, to be adopted as their family. We pray that everything goes smoothly until the adoption is finalized that this little one may, may be their joy and delight and that they may love Madison um, as their own. Um, keep us safe as we travel. Um, help us to, to do our best in, in school and, and work. And I pray, Lord, that you may allow us to love you, God, with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind and love our neighbor as ourselves. We pray all this in Jesus' name and all God's people said. All right. Thank you guys. Have a great week and we'll get back at this again next Wednesday. All right. Bye.